going to talk about what that is in a moment, and then until his return, and we have the eternal state beyond that. Uh, I'm going to bring out more about this in a moment. I'm just highlighting right now, okay? Um, in verses 1 through 7, we see verse 2, that Satan is bound. Uh, he can no longer deceive the nations, Colossians 2 and verse 15. Uh, when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. When Christ uh, had, uh, was uh, uh, crucified and was resurrected, uh, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public display, having triumphed over them through, uh, through him. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 through 15, therefore, since the children Scared in flesh and blood, he himself, that is Christ, likewise also partook of the saying that through death he might render powerless him who has the power of death, that was Satan, the devil, that is the devil, and he might free those who fear through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. Um, no longer can he deceive the nation. Verse 4 speaks about the saints reign, Revelation 1, verse 6, and he has made us to be a kingdom, priest to God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever. And ever so, again, we're just picking up from uh, from what has already been uh, displayed or uh, uh, pro proclaimed that the saints are reigning. He made us a kingdom and priests to God and His Father. And uh, uh, in, in Revelation chapter three, verse twenty-one, to lay out a city, he says, "To lay out a city," he says, "He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne." Already reigning. Uh, so uh, uh, in, in verse 6 or verse 5, uh, well, in chapter 5 and verse 10 also with uh, the saints reigning, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Uh, so it's always been uh, the will of God for those who are baptized in the blood to reign with Christ. Uh, verse 5, and not the rest of the dead. We we'll talk about that in detail in a minute. In verse six, the saints reign. Uh, in verse seven, the Satan was released to make war. We touched on that in the last hour, but now it's cast into the lake of fire. Verse ten. So we'll talk more about. We're going to break that down here as we go. I thought I got rid of all those, but I guess not. Or I pulled up the wrong one. Okay, so uh, verse twenty, uh, chapter twenty, verse one. I. I saw an angel coming down from heaven holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. He's normally applied access, especially in Revelation 1, chapter 1, verse 18, chapter 3, verse 7, 9, verse 1. But here it applies the ability to the law and hence bind. It's it's specifically refers to control, sovereign control. The term chain can also be translated as handcuffs, uh, but more than likely, their uh, the binding seems to imply shackles of some kind. Again, figuratively, because you cannot shackle Satan in a literal sense. Uh, this is the fourth key passage, by the way, in the book. We have in chapter 1, verse 18, the keys of death and Hades that Christ uh, holds. Uh, you have uh, in chapter 3, and verse 7, the key of David. And you have in chapter 9, and verse 1, the key of the shaft of the abyss. Uh, so uh, uh, here we have the fourth, uh, in chapter 20 and verse 1, key, uh, and we also have here the bottomless pit as a place of confinement and of disobedient spirits who await judgment. Um, the binding of Satan, this is a, a, I think most Christians or the Lord's church don't have too big of a difficulty with the binding. Here, the four names of Satan are once again reiterated. We already read it back from chapter 12 and verse 9. Here, they, again, they are. We have the, uh, uh, the, the, the great red dragon or the dragon here, the serpent of old, the devil, and Satan all talk, spoken about. He's bound for this activity. Is, uh, he's bound and limited in this activity. Think about Job chapter 1 and verse 2. Andre, do you, do you remember what happens in Job chapter 1 and verse 2 with regard to the Satan or the Satan, he, he goes before and at the court of God, uninvited, he shows up. And uh, what happens? Well, he, he, he goes with the other angels before of God and, in fact, talk with God. 
Yeah, and 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 what does God uh, say? What does He say? What does God say? In general sense, I'm not asking for specifics. Um, I yeah. get... Have you considered my servant job? Right. right. God actually brings up because what is uh, Satan says? Uh, you know, uh, God has where you been? He says, I've been. Uh, you know, like First Peter five, I've been like a roaring lion, uh, singing about whom he may devour. He's been throughout the earth singing to whom he may devour. And God says, "Can you consider my serpent? Have you considered my serpent, Job? Right?" And what does Satan say? Well, you put a hedge around him. You protected him. If you would allow me to remove that protection, Job would certainly curse you. And of course, God does allow him, but he limits. What he allows him to do, right? First, only to bring uh, calamity upon his life, right? Around him, his family, his wealth, uh, etc., and it brings this calamity, this loss of of, uh, of wealth and loss of family and such. So God limits him. Then once again in chapter two, uh, the Satan, Satan, once again appears and says, "Well, you're still protecting him because because in the first uh, chapter, God says, but don't harm him." Well, the second chapter, he says, okay, you can, you can harm him, but not take his life. Once again, God depicts sovereign control and his limitation of Satan. And so we see the same thing happening here. Satan is limited in what he has got allows him to do and what he is enabled, what he is capable of doing. Um, the very binding of Satan occurred during Jesus' lifetime. Read in Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Uh, somebody? Matthew 12, 29. Yeah that's, yeah, that's it. Or how can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? All right. So the, the image here, you find the same image, I think, in uh, Mark 3, verse 27, Luke 10, verse 17 and following is that it's during Jesus' lifetime, which, what does Christ do? He entered into, or excuse me, uh, the, uh, the uh, Satan enters into the house of God. Uh, and, uh, but yet, uh, I'm going to get this right up. Hold on a minute. Or my I Because I'm not reading it. Matthew 4, verse 29. So let's back up and read the context. Verse 25, and I know the thoughts Jesus said, any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And a city or house divided against itself, it will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he's divided against himself. And how then will his kingdom stand? If I, by the uh, Beelzebub, cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? For this reason, they will be judged. But if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. So the kingdom of God is the reference here. Or how can anyone who enter a strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds a strong man uh, and then he will uh, plunder his house? The reference here is that, uh, 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 is this a reference to Satan being bound? It is. That uh, Christ in his kingdom, the kingdom is arrived in Christ and uh, in his arrival in the kingdom, and Satan is not just, uh, or the, the Christ is not, uh, even before the resurrection, he is that binding of Satan has begun. And at the resurrection, uh, uh, it is fully completed. Satan is limited, no longer having power over death. Uh, the devil lost power over sin and death at the resurrection of Jesus, John chapter 12, verse 31 through 32. Uh, I'm almost there when you read that. John chapter 12, verse 31 through 32. Uh, but Jesus answered and said, This voice has come, uh, has not come for my sake, but for your sake. Now judgment is upon the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. So the ruler of the world is the great red dragon, Satan. Uh, and uh, Colossians 2, verse 15 also brings out, it's worth looking at these passages. We have time, but there's only 15 verses in chapter 20. Uh, Colossians 2, and verse 15. 
And then verse 15 reads, uh, he had disarmed, and when he had disarmed, when he disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display over them. We read that earlier, having triumphed over them through him. Yeah. We already read Hebrews uh, chapter 2. No, we didn't read 2.14. I don't remember. No, not that one. Uh, it's a uh, verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed, to purify for himself the people for his own possession. Uh, as else for good Hebrews, Hebrews 2 15. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Titus. No wonder I didn't read it after that. I'm not reading right. Uh, I'm ready anyway. Uh, therefore, since the children share the flesh and blood, we did read that one. He himself likewise partook of the same that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Uh, in verse 15, there as well. Um, and, and might free those through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. Uh, so, anyway, uh, so uh, the entire Christian era is the time of Satan's limited power. Christ prevails partly because. He knows the names of his adversaries. Uh, in the context of the list of names, here uh, might almost be sort of an official, uh, as if a legal sentence is, is read to the condemned prisoner, uh, where you have, in, um, go back to Revelation chapter 20. And he laid a hold, of, he laid a hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years.